Hi everyone, Rachel Gray here. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Today is an awesome day. Reason being, I am so excited to interview Benson. It's my first ever YouTube collab. He is actually a fellow YouTuber, a colleague as you would say. He has a personal finance channel and he's gonna be walking us through his journey from debt to making $450,000 in investing. So he's going to share with us how exactly to invest, what to invest in, and so much more. So I'm ready and I hope you are too. Let's get into it. Thank you so much for coming and speaking to us here on my channel. I want to start with the question everybody is wondering, and that is, who are you? <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me about your YouTube channel. Tell me about you, where you're coming from, why you started YouTube. Let's get started with that. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Rachel, for inviting me. It's a pleasure. I am Benson Gitao. I am 33 years old and I am an immigrant. I came to the States in 2011, and I actually went to Seattle and then eventually joined the Marine Corps, and uh, I settled in California. I am a current cybersecurity engineer. I am an MBA holder, and I also own a business in contracting whereby I contract with the state. I'm a father of a six-year-old boy, and I'm expecting a newborn uh, next year. So well, congrats. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about how you got into investing because I noticed that's what your channel is really centered around. In 2013 to 2014, I got myself into a situation whereby I did not like it. So I was dating this girl at the time who's the mother of my six-year-old. And I found out within one year I racked up debt and I was, I owed $26,000 within one year. And so I was like, oh my God. $26,000? Yes. Wow. Yes. Within one year? Yes. My credit cards were just, you know, anyways, I maxed out my credit cards because I, I, to me, I had a job and I was like, okay, I can always pay for this. But then the debt kept on accumulating. So at the time when I met her, she had a job but then she quit the she quit her job and then we moved in together and you know uh we still kind of continued with the same lifestyle that we were living even though she had lost her income in 2014 january i deployed to afghanistan and during that time we were kind of shaky our relationship was shaky and um we decided to call quits and within that time i deployed from january to july 31st so seven months. Within that time, I paid off the 26000 and I had 11000 saved up. So that gave me a signal and told me, you are good with money and this is what you need to manage. So at the time, I was not paying for housing. At the time, I was not paying for all other stuff, even though I was supporting my kid because my kid got born four months into deployment. I was still supporting him and I, I wasn't sending peanuts. I was sending like good money back. I was still able to save. That got me interested. And I was like, if I, since I came here to, in 2011, for all those years, if I had not made the bad choices like the one I had made, where would I be? Because I've always wanted to be, well, by then I used to be a millionaire. I, my goal has kind of shifted from being a millionaire to financial independence. So, mm. yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. I kind of want to ask you about when you first started investing, because a lot of us are, you know, straight out of college, just landed, you know, our first job. And I don't think we know where to start. So we have no idea, no clue. They give you like a package when you start like, okay, this is a 401k. This is this, this is that. And you're just like, okay, you know, there's no real education until you actually go actually look for it. And most of us are busy. So tell me what is the first investment you would recommend making straight out of college? I struggled very much the same way you guys are struggling. 
So it's, that's a very interesting question that you bring up because I finally figured it out. I saw this guy on uh, YouTube, his name was Rose Cameron, uh, Cameron and his, his channel is called Warrior Trading. So all he does is day trade. So um, I signed up for his course, I paid 2000, that was in 2016, I paid like 2000 and some change uh, for his fee and I learned how to day trade. And mm -hmm. during, during that time when I learned how to day trade that I was able to read uh, the charts, the stock market, I learned a lot about the stock market. Actually, I have a, an upcoming uh, series, just like I have a, a vending machine series, I have a stock market series that will kind of outline a lot of uh, the knowledge that I've learned over time. So basically, I, I learned a lot from that, more from, way more from what I have learned in school. Right, right now, I finished my MBA last year, and I can tell you what I learned from MBA, it's not even near to what I learned during my trading right. lifetime. So to answer your question, the best investment you can make is invest in yourself. Don't even look at, yeah, invest in yourself. Like the financial education, that's the first key. That's the first thing you want to invest in because without financial education, you can go and uh, put your money in the stock market. But it doesn't mean anything because you are making an informed decision. But mm. when you educate yourself, you have all the powerful tools that you need and you will be successful. I love that. I love that. So you would say the first thing you do, invest in yourself. If you have a little bit of money, just invest in yourself because you need to know what to do. The way you do that is you can go, right now in, in the information technology age, uh, you have YouTube, you have podcasts, and um, it's literally everywhere. Look for financial channels. You look, look for uh, stuff like that because you're not going to be able to find this type of education in schools. So, uh, and absorb it, absorb as much as you can. And eventually over time, make it a habit. Eventually over time, you become good at it. Awesome. Thanks. We know that multiple streams of income is very important, especially with Corona. Like those of us who've had just one job, and that job was in an industry that's now going down. We mm. know the importance of multiple streams of income. However, there are just 24 hours in a day. What would you say a millennial, again, same situation, just came out of college, learned a little bit about investing now, and they're looking to obtain multiple streams of income. What, what should they do? What should they be on the lookout for? There is a very big struggle there, and I'll tell you why. Um, there's two types of uh, jobs you can look, jobs like that are kind of more online, which is, which is more scalable. I, I'm a fusion of, I was, let, me, let me give um, a little bit of my history. I was born in the, on the countryside back in Kenya, but then my dad has had uh, properties in the city and um, in the countryside, so I used to visit. So I'm a fusion of both. So the people on the city side, they're kind of more likely to do business on uh, like online businesses, right? And the people from the countryside, they're more likely to do the manual work, right? So I'm handy and that's why sometimes you see me uh, 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 go to vending machines because I want to I wanna get back physical activity, right? I was not, I don't even know how to game. Like I can game, but it's, it, it doesn't interest me, right? But if you're in the city, you're more likely to be more on the game, gaming and, and, and more online than anything else. It's, it, mm -hmm. it, it's more exciting. So you kind of have to figure out your balance, right? I'm an introvert. At the same time, I like being outside because it expenses my energy. If I stay on my desk for the whole day, I'll go crazy because I want to get out there and do some sort of activity, right? Um, because I have, a, I have a lot of energy. So you figure out where you want to be. So for online, Right now, the hottest things are drop shipping and F Amazon FBA, and you can create your own store and, and, or, on eBay um, and just do drop shipping, eBay, Amazon, and it's hot thing. I, I look at, like right now, there's some YouTube channels that I follow, and you see people making, uh, this is like after, the, after taxes, they make about, about seven to 15,000 to 20,000. I even saw one person make 80,000 a month. So, you know, mm -hmm. there's no limit to how much you can make. And it's, 
it kind of starts more of a side hustle when you're doing your normal job, but then it picks up, you know. Uh, on the, if you're more on the physical side, I think you can look into uh, appliances, like where you're actually physically going and uh, buying appliances from, t- uh, from people. Like I do that uh, sometimes. I'll go buy a fridge for like $100 and then I'll come to my, on my backyard and then I'll fix it and then I'll pressure wash it, clean it nice, clean it real nice, and then I'll sell it for 500 bucks. And that only takes like a day, you know? Mm. And sometimes I'll do that with washers and dryers. Uh, and I'll make, you see that the profit margin is very good. And vending machines too. So you can, there's a lot of uh, opportunities. Of course, of course. Mm-hmm. I've heard it said that sometimes it's really necessary to take risk, not only with your money, but sometimes in life. What's your take on this in terms of investing? I call it calculated risk. Mm. Because you cannot just take in a risk. I am a risk taker. And I, we had a struggle. Like I'll, I'll give you a story about my wife and I. My wife and I is the type of person who likes to save money. Like she'll go and um, um, earn and save. For me, it does not make any sense to save money. I mean, I, I like to save money, but it doesn't make sense. It, it, for me, I, I like to grow the money that I earned, right? Like, if I get $50, I don't want $50 to be sitting in the bank where this 50 can be, bring me $20 tomorrow, you know? So that's the way I am thinking. And so I'm a risk taker, and I think you should take risks, not any type of risks, because I'm not going to go and take the 50 bucks, 50 bucks in the banks and go and gamble with that. That's, that's, that's just, that's just kind of plain stupid, you know, like that is not calculated risk. But if I know I can analyze a stock and say, Hey, this stock has uh, produced a 5% return for the last decade or for the past um, 20 years. So there's, there's a likelihood that it's going to produce 5% the coming year. So you're saying take risk, but take calculated risk. Correct. Follow-up question. As we all know, there's racial tension happening now in the United States and abroad, everywhere. So we're seeing a huge divide, not only between white, black, minority, white. We're also seeing a divide between those who are wealthy and those who are poor. Most times in those same uh, divided communities. So my question now is, you know that generational wealth is a thing. And most people in my generation are looking to build that wealth. How we have nothing to fall back on most of the time. We're not given an inheritance or we're not given mommy and daddy's money. We basically have to create our own wealth right? Mm -hmm. So does that affect now the level of risk that we take or we should take? I would say no, it should not affect. The divide between the poor and the rich based on the analysis that I've done, it has been caused, there's a website called uh, what WTF happened in 1971, right? Mm -hmm. So in 1971, that's when everything started. And you can look at the charts and the graphs. You can see that's when ratio divide be, uh, became bigger. That's when um, uh, the, the gap between the poor and the rich became bigger because we, we were in, um, the money we have right now is just paper. Before, in 1971, it was attached to gold, right? Like you could have gone to the bank and t- tell them, hey, um, you turn in your paper, they give you gold. So since that happened, it created this uh, type of environment whereby the Federal Reserve, which is the organization that controls money, they can manipulate um, rates, uh, they can manipulate money the way they want it, right? And their focus became the stock market. And guess what? When the money goes to the stock market, who, it's like being on YouTube, right? If you have subs- a, little, a lot of subscribers, you keep getting more subscribers, right? So it's the same effect in the stock market. The, the more money you have, the more you're going to get because you can take bigger risks and, and get more, more reward, right? And the Federal Reserve encourages that behavior. 
I'm an, I'm an immigrant, definitely, and I've served in the military. So kind of know both sides, right? There's this attention whereby people say, oh, uh, there's no discrimination, all oh, this. I think there is discrimination, but it, it plays a very small part when it comes to money and, and, um, and the, the wealth gap. The wealth gap has more to do with uh, the Federal Reserve and the way they, they control money. Um, and uh, for our generational world, I think it's something we have to we have, have we have to just bite our bullet and say it it is what it is, and we have to start from a scratch. And it's unfair because um, if someone is given a head start and you're not given a head start, definitely there's gonna be a big impact, right? So um, I hope things are better. But one thing I'll tell you, I know most people um bashing the capitalism right i think it has its flaws but i think it's the easiest way for if you don't have nothing to uh to rise up quickly it has it has you have high chances succeeding in a capitalism world than uh community communism or socialism which is people kind of more that's what people are kind of more looking to to go towards you know because i came from Kenya and, and everything is kind of more from that side, socialism, communism, and it's not pretty, you know? Um, people don't have any, it gets worse. Like people think they have it worse here. I think the reason why I'm able, I've been able to do better is because I came from a horrible environment and I, I come and, and see opportunity, you know? So I also think, um, we as the, the the people of color, we look at these world world gaps, and because we've been kind of been discriminated, I've been discriminated actually. So um, you look at it and you're like, maybe they're doing this because of my color, right? Or and yes, there is a small part, but for the most part, no. It has everything to do with the Federal Reserve and the way they manage. Uh, the way they manage money, you know, the way they manage how the how we get the money that is distributed throughout the economy. Just bottom line, those of us without generational wealth, mm -hmm. are you saying that we should not let that affect how we move with our investing? Correct. I don't think that discrimination should um, change the way you approach things. It should you should be more like. For me, more I take it more like a motivator. Like you don't want me to do this. You're putting all these roadblocks. I'm gonna guess what? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna do it anyways. You know, like I had a um, a professor who failed me uh, a class in uh, an MBA. One of one of the classes in the MBA, uh, and she was very rigid. And she was, anyways, it was our personalities. They were just, you know, and I could have quit. And I said. Screw that, I'm not gonna do it. So do I have an MBA? Yes, I do. Was it hard? Yeah, it was, you know. But you know, I think it's about the resilience. Of course, of course. Mm -hmm. On to resilience. I like that word. Mm -hmm. I resonate with that word. Have you failed in any investment you've ever made? And how did you recover? How were you resilient? So yes. So I was day trading. And this happened, um, as I was telling you, I started with an account uh, with, I think it had 5,000. And I grew the account to uh, 400,000, right? Just day trading, yeah. Uh, so I need to get this course. Where is this course? <laughs> no, like, no, it's, 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 day trading is gambling. Like, it's gambling, but, it pays off like right now it, it depends on the and different environments right that in 2017 it was a very perfect and perfect environment and even right now i think 2020 it's a, it's a perfect environment so when the federal reserve you, ha you have to know when they're 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 hiking the interest rates that that's when you don't want to day trade but when they they lower the interest rates that means a lot of money is going to the stock market and when you involve okay. in the stock market you're most likely to get to make money so I made about 450,000 overall in the stock market day trading. However, there's this one day 
that I lost 150,000 like that. One day, gone. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, and I think I went to, into a depression. <laughs> Because I had to take, I had to take. We're breath. laughing, but one hundred and fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money. I had That's to take, I, yeah, I had to take therapy for roughly six months, you know, yeah, and I actually don't day trade anymore. I do not, because it was, it was, it's like, um, it's addictive. It's like, you know, you, it's, it's like a drug, yeah. So, and, and you could be. Like you could go out uh, with your partner and you're having dinner and in your head, all you're thinking about is like, oh my God, my portfolio, oh, this stock, you know? So you get into this state of anxiety that you don't want to come from. Like the, it's very hard to come from. Me taking, the, uh, taking um, counseling, it took me from that place and it got my mind into a better, uh, better place. And now I'm more of a long-term investor. So... What advice would you give to your younger self summarizing everything on investing? Well, I think for, long, for the longest, when, especially when I was growing up, I thought something magic, magical would appear and I'll, be, I'll become uh, rich or financially uh, stable. I think I thought something will happen out of the blue, right? So I think what I would tell myself is nobody will do it for you. So you better get started, you know? Because at the, at the time, I think I was living in a, in a fantasy whereby you're like, you start imagining things that are non-existent. You're like, if I go right now and I win lottery, or if I, won, if I go, you know, <laughs> no, it's true. <laughs> uh, the, 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 the truck that transports money from uh, uh, the bank and, you know, they gave an accident and, and you know, uh, and you get what I'm saying? <laughs> That's a fantasy. That's a fantasy for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> but what, what you realize is wealth, uh, you start building wealth, you know, you start building wealth. And, and for me, it's what I have right now, who, who are, uh, where I am right now, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a product of the last three, four years of consistent uh, following uh, specific rules of money, you know? And I think if I was early, I, I think if I was young right now, I would tell myself, nobody would do it for you. So get started. Yeah, and I think that where we started, I really appreciate the first thing you said, which is invest in yourself. So you have the knowledge and then get started, do something. Because nothing's going to happen to you. <laughs> yeah. Like. <laughs> the truck yeah, like, isn't going to break down. <laughs> <laughs> like right now, you can give me $100. And I can turn that $100 into 1000 in a week or two. I can do that. And I'm very confident. Because what I have right now is skills, you know. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And if you don't have those skills, it's just tough. You're not going to be able to do that. I love it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. Um, the knowledge not only I have gained today, but I'm sure everybody who's going to watch this is going to gain so much. And it's great to have an example of somebody who's done it. $450,000, guys, from $5,000. Okay. So yeah, so thank you again. I hope you guys really enjoyed that video. I wanted to tell you about a project that Benson and I have started. It's a Facebook group for content creators. So we're all trying to get better at our craft, but we're in a unique environment. We're in the 2020 content creation environment, the Kelly Stamps YouTube environment. And it's different, of course. We have so much on YouTube that we can go and look up and say, oh, this is interesting and share tips on that. However, we are in a new environment and we thought it would be great to create a space so that as content creators, we can talk, 
about you know what we're going through we can share our videos and maybe even say hey i didn't like that intro i think you could do this better maybe tweak this so there are a few requirements to join one of them is that you must at least be creating for at least three months the second is that you're actually going to have to share your link to where your content is being created. So we are really excited to start this and I think it will be a great place to build community and really get better at our craft. So I hope you join. The link will be in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you on Sunday. Bye guys.